Hi everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpire. This week we are going to be making a beautiful cover for the ironing board. I have here a standard, um, at least standard in the United States of America ironing board which measures approximately 13 inches wide at the center and 52 inches tall. And that can be found at any like Walmart or Target, that standard size ironing board. If you have an ironing board that is larger, what you can do is use your existing cover as a template and then um, custom fit your pieces to your ironing board. But I thought it'd be best to go with the standard ironing board for this tutorial so I can give you the exact measurements. So let's get started. This, I'm gonna use a patchwork design since I love patchwork and I have so many beautiful fabrics around. So let me show you the pieces. For this project, we are going to use one, two, three, four, five, six different fabrics and you know the ironing board tapers at the top. So I'm gonna give you the initial measurements for um, the rectangle that you would cut out. And then I'm going to teach you how to taper those pieces. So let's start with the easy one. The largest piece is just a rectangle and that's going to measure 14 inches wide by 33 inches long. And I will put all the measurements on the blog as well so you can reference those in one spot. And then the second largest piece is going to measure 14 inches wide by 13 and a half inches tall. So that be the first cut that you make. Then to get that nice beautiful taper so that the cover fits your ironing board, we're going to Fold your piece in half like that and then using a rotary cutter and a mat, that's the best way to do this, you're going to taper from the top. So you're going to come in from the top five inches from the center. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to count down four and a half inches. So that's one, two, three, four and a half. So I put the ruler on the five and the four and a half. So I feel like this is, you know, the X and the Y axes. Um, then you just cut with your rotary cutter. And here's the original piece. So it was like that. And then you cut and pull that aside and you have this wonderful angled piece. So for the remaining four pieces, you're going to use that same technique of angling. So I'm going to give you the original measurements and then the tapered measurements. And all of that is going to be on the blog as well if you just want to check it out and get it in one spot. So the next largest piece measures 10 inches wide across the bottom and two and a half inches tall. And when you fold that piece in half, you're going to taper it from the four and a quarter mark on the top to the two and a half on the side. And then the next piece measures nine inches across the bottom and three inches tall. And when you fold it in half, you're going to taper that to three and a half inches by three inches. And you just cut right on that angle. And then the next piece measures seven 
and a quarter inches across the bottom and two and a half inches tall. And fold that in half and angle that from the three inches, the three inch on the top to the two and three quarters at the bottom. And then you have your last piece, which measures six inches across the bottom and two and a half inches tall. And then when you fold that, you're gonna angle from two and a half inches at the top to three inches at the bottom. So the it might be helpful for you to know the total measurements of each piece. So the tiniest piece, the finished tapered measurements are six inches by five inches by two and a half. And then the second piece is seven and a quarter by six by two and a half. And then the next piece is nine inches by three inches by seven inches. And then this piece here is 10 inches by eight and a half inches by two and a half inches. And the last angle piece is 14 inches by 10 inches by 13 and a half inches. And again, all of that will be on the blog in one spot for you. But I want to start sewing. So the first thing we're going to do is take this larger angled piece and attach it to our largest rectangle. And I'm just going to do that by positioning right sides together and stitching using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way across there to join the two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and backstitch at the beginning and the end to reinforce that. And that's a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. the bulk of the cover, these two beautiful pieces. So make sure you choose um, fabrics that you really love. I'd hope that you choose fabrics you love for the entire project, but you definitely want to love these two. Then you take your next largest piece and position that along the top edge here. And I'm going to stitch straight across there, reinforcing at the beginning and the end. Just position the like edges right sides together and then stitch all the way across.
cinch up on that, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So I'm going to head over to my other ironing board and press these seams all flat real quick. So now my back seams have all been pressed flat and I want to get a piece of quilt batting that is the same size. So if you had a piece of quilt batting that measured at least 52 inches long by 13 inches wide, maybe just add an inch or two to be safe there, you could spread that out and then trim around. I have pre-cut mine using the template that I made to create this pattern. So I should have a pretty good fit here. Now I'm just going to take this beautiful top panel and lay it on the batting. And batting, if you've worked with that before, if you're a quilter, it tends to grip the fabric, so that's nice. You don't need any pins. And you just want to run your fingers across that and smooth it out. And I did a good job trimming that up so I don't have to do much of anything now. I just want to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles in the batting underneath. Can you feel one there? So make sure it's all smooth because we are going to do a little bit of quilting on the top of this. If you want it, you could go hog wild and really embellish the top of this cover with swirls and stripes and zigzags, whatever you want to do. However much time you have that you can commit to this, go for it. Um, for, for my cover, I'm just going to um, stitch down each row and then I don't even think, I don't even think I'm gonna stitch at all on this part. I think it'll be fine. So I just wanna stitch a line across each row just as a little accent, but I'm not gonna put any detail down here on this bottom part, but you certainly could have a good time quilting that up nice. has a little accent there. Thank you. 
Perfect. So I've added my detailing, which you can see the lines there on the back. And it just makes it pretty on the front. The, um, from a functional standpoint, it's just going to hold down those interior seams. So in case you want to wash the cover, it doesn't get all bunched up on you. Trim up the little extra thread there. And then I want to move on to attaching that drawstring trim or binding around the edge. So we can leave our pretty cover here. And for this, what I've done is chopped up a bunch of um, long strips of fabric that are at least three inches wide. Some of them are a full 21 inches in length but they're all three inches wide. And I just want to attach them all to create one very long um, strip that measures at least 147 inches long by three inches wide. So I'm going to attach all those strips really quickly. And it's the same 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance to do that. which I want to take over to the iron and press wrong sides together so that the entire strip is folded in half long ways. Now I have a lot of trim which is going to double as the gusset that we're going to feed the elastic or the drawstring through to cinch the cover around the ironing board. At one end, just fold over that edge so you have a nice finished edge. Again, so if you need to wash the cover, you don't, your fabric won't fray. And then just stitch that in place. Open it up and just stitch that hem down. around and I'm going to start attaching this trim at the rear of the ironing board or at the end of this widest spot and I have a little batting here overhanging that I'm going to clean up real quick. We don't need that. Extra bulk there so that's gone. And I'll start with the pretty finished edge. And I want to position it right about center. And I'm going to align the raw edges. Just a bit for you. I'm going to align the raw edges of the trim piece or the gusset with the raw edges of the ironing board cover. And I just want to go all the way around that and pin it. And then we will be stitching all the way around to attach that. And when you fold it over, it's going to have a nice finished edge. So when you get to the corner here, you can... This lighter fabric is might be a little difficult to see, but you're just going to boost that up a tiny bit and then fold it over so you can make a mitered corner there and you'll that's going to fold around the ironing board corner so you want to have a little extra there and I'm just going to go all the way around until I get back to this center piece and then I'll trim it and finish that last edge in the same way with the little hem uh, 
I don't know exactly how much trim I'm gonna need. I just roughly estimated. So we'll, at the end, I'll be able to tell you how much I cut off and then maybe we'll have a better estimate. it up a bit. And now I'm down to this, back to where I began. So I want to overlap probably three inches and trim that. So I only have 14 extra inches there. So you could take that off of that original measurement and, and just to just to make sure you don't run out because it would be a terrible shame to get to the end and be too short. The least I would go is 137 inches of trim. So we have this nice little edge here. Just fold that over and then go ahead and take it over to your machine and stitch it down so you have a finished edge on both ends. Underneath, I have an entrance for the uh, elastic or string, and then on the other side, I have an entrance too. So we'll be able to feed that all the way through and then tie it and cinch up the cover on it. So now I'm just going to go along with the same 3 8 inch seam allowance and stitch all the way around the perimeter of this. When you get to the corners, adjust them so that the corners are meeting and you are going to still get your full gusset on that. You'll need to remove the pins as you go. Now I'm going to reinforce at the beginning and the end. Right here at the opening will be a stressor. So you want to make sure that's nice and secure. I'm coming up on that first corner, so I'll just remove that pin so I have all that extra there and fiddle with it so that I feel it's lined up nice. And then I'm going to lift up the foot and fold all that back and then I can because my needle is in the down position I'm going to pivot that and I can really transition around that corner nice in the final corner here so I'm going to stitch to the end and then lift up the foot keep the needle in the down position and pivot pushing all that fabric in the opposite direction start point so I'm going to 
stitch over the top of the original um, stitch line and then reinforce just a smidge. Now the trim should be totally attached. We're going to take a look and see how that turned out. And this is a good time to see if anything slipped and there's any holes. It's an easy fix now. So just fold that back and see how it's going to look. Go all the way around. And I don't see any holes, which is awesome. Now I just want to thread the elastic through. And then we're going to fit this on the ironing board. Have some quarter inch ribbed elastic here that has a lot of stretch in it. I would, you know, suggest having at least 120 inches. I'm not going to pre um, cut or measure mine, I'm just going to feed it through until I reach the other end. And then as I fit it on the ironing board cover, I'll pull that elastic, knot it off, and trim it if I need to. So I'm going to use a safety pin. Just come in about a half an inch into that elastic right in the center and pin it so it doesn't give out on me. And I'll start feeding that through the channel and moving all the way around and you just push and pull, push and pull. Coming out the other end there, and as soon as I can, I'm going to grab that elastic. And you're going to want to hold on really tight, but you're going to have a lot of pulling to do. I didn't want to exert all this pressure just with the safety pin because one of two things is going to happen. It's going to come, come unsnapped, and you're going to poke yourself and then have to try and figure out how to get it snapped inside of that channel, or you're going to pull so hard it's going to rip the elastic. So now that I have this elastic safely out, I'm just going to start pulling until I can really get this to give and I have a lot more elastic in there than this. So if I've I'm, I'm got this end wrapped around my fingers and if I pull this way, it starts feeding up the other end. And that's what we want to happen. So it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, wrestling an alligator or a two-year-old. <laughs> but you just keep pulling until you get a lot more elastic in there. And I feel like I'm getting close, like but I don't want it to be too tight, so I'll give a good pull. And that seems pretty good. Now, I don't want to trim this up just in case it's not, so I'm just going to tie it loosely. Well, not loosely. It, I'm going to tie it tightly, but I'm going to have a very long tail in case I need some more. Then we want to go over to the ironing board and test fit this. And once I know that it fits well, then we can get rid of this dangling edge here. I love this. Cool. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stand it up. is really good so I feel okay about trimming that long tail at least and getting that out of the way then I want to carefully 
untie this elastic holding everything because I don't want it to cinch up in there. All right, good. So that tail, that little knot is going to stay put for me. So that's nice. And I think um, I'll just trim that up and leave four or five inches overhanging uh, for the wash or if I need to tighten it, whatever. It can just get tucked under there, I'm sure, underneath and be okay. And then I'll just fold everything under. And I'm just so pleased. Oh, this, this is so fun for me. I have another present. All right. Let me show you how pretty it is. Oh, it fit really. So nice. It feels so good, too. All right, here you go. Thank you. I'll sit down here. Thank you for sewing with me again. This is, um, the new format is really turning out to be so much fun for me. I love getting presents. I hope you do too. This project is nice. It came together in less than an hour for sure. Like I said in the beginning, if you have a larger ironing board cover, there's a good chance that when you remove your old cover that there's going to be this ooey foam, which I'm going to show you. It looks like this. This is what was under mine. And I'm sniffling, so I think I'm allergic to this ooey foam. So you see that this is exactly the shape and the, the perfect pattern for your ironing board. So if you use that foam, blast all of that dust bunnies coming off of that, you can create a custom cover that fits your ironing board. Like I have this other great ironing board over here that's extra wide, and I'll do the same thing for that and make a beautiful cover for it as well using this pattern. The measurements I gave you are for a standard ironing board cover. So you don't have to go through all of that trouble of creating your own pattern. If you have a standard board, you can use the measurements. I'll summarize everything on the blog, sewspire.com, and I'll be back next week with another surprise sewing project. Have a great week.